Oh, I can tell you it's a disaster. That's one of our most valuable pieces. Hawks are a specialty of Mr. Milton's, and that's a signature work. Any Milton collector would kill to... Uh, excuse me, that was an unfortunate burst of hyperbole. But I can say with no exaggeration at all that the perch predator is an expensive item indeed. And I'll be calling my insurance agent as soon as we're done here. Do you have a photo of that missing statue? Standard operating procedure in the art game. I'll be glad to get it for you. Though I'd appreciate its eventual return. Insurance, you know. I had an emergency overnight artwork delivery to ship. I needed to leave by 5 p.m., but Rachel was adamant we had to wait for the artist to come. I really shouldn't have left the two of them alone in the gallery, but they are, were, respectable clients. Anyway, Rachel, well, refused to leave. She said she was staying put just in case. I believe her words were, irresponsible ass of an artist does me the supreme favor of showing up. So that's how I came to leave the two of them here, and I had intended to be back before we closed at 6. As it was, it was 6.10 before I returned and found the door wide open and Rachel... Rachel in this terrible posture. As for her fiancé, he was nowhere to be seen. This is the most ghastly thing that has ever happened at the Nathan Ackerman Fine Arts Studio. What kind of mad beast are we dealing with here? Her fiancé is one Mark Stock, a taciturn fellow with a physique worthy of a Greek sculpture and just about as talkative. Frankly, he has the personality of a doorstop and the artistic taste of a hillbilly. Forgive my candor. The man does have his admirers. He's an ex-baseball player of some kind from the minor leagues, I believe. As I said, he was here with Rachel when I left, but when I returned, she was alone. Undead. Patrick Milton. Many of the works in this showroom are in fact his. He is not a critical darling, considered by some too commercial, but the public loves him, and as long as they do, so do I. Be my guest. Close. Try using a similar tool. Yes, they were having an argument about the art, which was unusual as Mr. Stock had never expressed an opinion from the beginning. Now he was making a stand. He said it was foolish to make such a fuss, and the wedding could easily go on without these silly pieces. But Rachel wasn't having any of that. In Mr. Stock's words, he can sound rather shrill for such a strapping specimen of masculinity, he said Rachel had become unreasonable and out of control over the artist not showing up. And, well, honestly, he had a point. She did have that, that side to her. Understand, I was very fond of Rachel, but frankly, some of the invective she hurled was directed not just at her fiancé, but, if you can imagine, at me. Ah, that was the spark that lit the fuse of the argument between Rachel and Mark. The artist had vowed to be here with the finished painting and sculpture first thing this morning, but he didn't show up at all, not the first time, and Rachel flew into a rage when he did not appear.
Fortunately, a truce between the betrothed had come to pass before I had to leave. They were even, shall we say, affectionate. I felt comfortable enough leaving them alone. The storm had blown over, and they were like lovebirds again. Heavens, our association goes back years, almost a decade. Quite frankly, he's the star here. I've displayed and sold hundreds of his works. I could have sold more, but he misses so many deadlines. No matter how hard I tried to breed professionalism into his artist's soul, I failed. Still, he does sell. To me, Mark Stock would be an enigma if he had a higher IQ. During their tiff, he seemed cold, emotionless. He's one of those passive-aggressive types who occasionally erupt, but in a strange, distant way, unleashing a torrent of abusive language, but delivering that invective in a controlled, cruel manner, seemingly devoid of any feeling. They visit Vegas frequently, weekend getaways, on which they invariably stop by my gallery to do business. Rachel did so love art. What was the question? Ah, no, I have no address. They flew in for their wedding, and I have no idea at which hotel, though it will certainly be one of the pricier ones. Ridiculous as it might seem, no. I have never once, in all the years of our very successful association, even seen his studio. As I say, he's quirky private to the point of reclusiveness. Oh, but of course I have a phone number and a P.O. box. He wants his checks, after all. That'll be enough to track him. Thanks, Mr. Ackerman. My fingerprints are all over this gallery, both literally and figuratively. As I said, I intend to cooperate fully. My life is an open book. Uh, no, I'm sorry, no. What happened to full cooperation? Your life an open book? My life is an open book, that I pledge to you. But I can't allow this door to be opened. I may seem inconsistent, but there are many expensive, even priceless objects dark back there, and I cannot risk damage. Particularly when I see no relevance to your investigation, since it's been locked throughout this entire unfortunate affair. I'm sorry, unless you have a warrant, I can't... Uh, I just can't allow you to go flinging your fingerprint powder around and spritzing your various sprays. Hey, do you need a hint? A good idea to be thorough, but nothing's there. Hey, do you need a hint?
A good idea to be thorough, but nothing's there. I'm sorry, unless you have a warrant, I just can't allow you to go flinging your fingerprint powder around and spritzing your various sprays. A good idea to be thorough, but nothing's there. Hey, do you need a hint? Once you tell me exactly what we're looking for, I'll send out the boys. Well, I can have a unit hit the hotels with cold calls. It'll take a while, but as long as our lovebirds were registered under their real names, we'll find them. Our friendly neighborhood art dealer opened the gallery 12 years ago and his record's clean. I found some online reviews saying Ackerman is an overcharging, tasteless fraud. But hey, that's no crime. Even a self-proclaimed genius like Patrick Milton can't escape the electric company. And we got his address from their bill. Here you go. Las Vegas Crime Lab. Murder investigation. Are you Patrick Milton? Yes. All right. Yes. I'm Patrick Milton, but I don't know anything about a 
murder, you say? Yes, sir. We have a few questions. You mind? You better make yourself clear about how this supposedly involves me because I'm on a deadline. I'm an artist on commission here, and I have a painting to finish, and I'm trying to grab a window of solitude while these damn construction workers are on break or whatever they're doing. My God, the noise lately here. What? W which commissioner? Y you don't mean Rachel? You don't mean Rachel Maddox, do you? It's not possible. There's no one on the planet more alive than Rachel. How... how did it happen? Blunt force trauma, Mr. Milton. The murder weapon may have been a statue. Possibly one of yours. The first predator is missing from the gallery. My lord, no. The hours, the months that went into that? Was it stolen? Please tell me it wasn't destroyed. It's one of my most valuable works. Well, right here, of course. I mean, I practically live in this studio. The demands on me as an artist are unceasing. Haven't you talked to my patron, the esteemed Nathan Ackerman? He called me and tore me a new one, and I decided the best thing to do was to stay home and get this painting and sculpture completed before Rachel's wedding day. I've been bunkered in here slaving ever since. My intention was to deliver everything tomorrow, right before the wedding. I couldn't see wasting time dealing with Rachel. There was a lot to admire about her, her spirit, her intelligence, but she was, well, she was frankly the worst tempered woman I ever met. The most difficult client I ever encountered. I figured the less contact with her, the better. Well, it began cordially enough. She was a big admirer of my work, wrote a number of my bird and animal sculptures. She approached me to do these special paintings to be displayed at her wedding reception. And I told her I rarely did the human form. I'm a nature artist, you see, and I have a knack for just slightly idealizing reality. Well, she did have her charming side, you know, and she said, Well, I'm one of nature's best works of art. Are you up to capturing me? <laughs> How can I turn her down? And the money wasn't bad either. And as I say, I would have delivered the painting and sculpture on time. Nick of time, but on time. Right at the reception ballroom. I'm almost done now. Did you contact Rachel or Ackerman to tell them about this change of plans? No. And before you condemn me as rude and egocentric, let me just say, you never had a deal with Rachel Maddox. You have no idea the hoops she made me jump through. Sounds unkind now that she's dead, but, but really, I wanted to keep her waiting. Let her, no other way of saying this, suffer a little, like I had. Let her squirm and stew. But my lord, I would never wish anything like this upon her. That's it, and it's going well. I'm almost done with it, but I guess there isn't any hurry now pity. Despite her ugly side, Rachel was a beautiful woman and a worthwhile subject. In a word, Rocky. She was a lovely girl, but rich and spoiled. At the beginning, she posed live for me, but she was so demanding. Kept leaving her modeling pedestal to see what I was doing. Literally look over my shoulder. That, oh hell, that was just maddening. Finally, I just banished her from my studio. I'd already taken photographs of her, in the desired pose, and these were sufficient reference. And photos don't talk back, nag, or interfere with the artistic process in any way. Actually, yes. The Maddox Stocks Wedding Commission is only part of what I have on my plate. And I've been battling headaches and back problems, what with all this horrendous construction racket going on, starting at 7 a.m., including weekends. Do you have any idea how difficult it is to concentrate? Well, from my point of view, it was entirely unprofessional and even hostile. I deserve better from someone I worked with for so long. You have no concept how much money I've made for Nathan Ackerman. But at least I didn't get caught up in a screaming match. I, I let the answering machine get it. He wanted me to drop everything and get over to the gallery. It was pretty clear from how frazzly he sounded. He had his own generous serving of Rachel Maddox at her worst. So you're telling me you didn't drop by to set Ackerman and your client straight? Hell no. Nathan I could handle, but as overworked as I am, dealing directly with Rachel Maddox, I didn't need that grief. Well, frankly, my intention was to avoid seeing her at all. She'd be at the wedding, and I'd be at the reception ballroom dropping off the yard. Call me a coward, but you people never saw Rachel in full flaming bitch mode. I guess you can take it.
Hey, do you need a hint? 